Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be creating a pull command for Discord using JavaScript and the Discord.js version 14 library. This command will allow users to create and vote on polls within your Discord server. The first step is implementing a new pull command. So if you've been following along with the series, or you haven't, make sure you go watch the previous episodes. They're crucial to understanding how Discord.js works and JavaScript in general. But now, since we have our command handler, and everything should be configured properly. If it's not, feel free to join the Discord server links in the description. Hopefully I have one by this late in the series. Regardless, now we're going to create a pull command. We're gonna do pull.js as the name of the file, and we're just gonna make a basic command. It might be useful for you to have a basic command set up and ready to go. And I'm just going to use standard old ping.js. It's a very small command and it's very easy to use and modify it to your needs. We're going to need embed builder and I'm not sure if we're gonna need anything else. We're gonna use the command handler from past episodes to create the poll when requested by a user and all of their desired options and other inputs. We will then extrapolate their inputs into an embed that will allow users to vote on the poll with reactions automatically assigned to the message. There are many default interactions, sorry, there are many default emojis on Discord. As you can see here, when I go into the emoji menu, there's multiple included emojis and then there's all the custom emojis, but there's multiple included emojis and mainly we'll be using numbers, I believe. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have multiple options. When a user puts in an option, then it will say, for example, I put in hello is option one, hi, bye. And then hopefully what it does is it changes it to one, hello, two, hi, and three, bye. And this will be a nice embed. And then obviously you'll have one, two, and three as reactions and people will be able to vote. So let's get started. We're gonna need to add all the different options. So what we're going to be doing is adding string options. We're going to take an option. And we're going to set the name. And we're going to say option one. We're going to set the description. And the description of it is going to say option one of, oh, I don't know. Let's set a maximum of five. I don't want to make too many. And then we're going to set the max value max length, sorry. Let's set the max length to 50. We don't need it to be too long. And set minimum length. Yeah, we don't need to set it to anything. Because what if you want to ask like a one number thing? All right. Now we just got to copy this five times and then make the necessary changes. Well, sorry, copy it three times. One, two, three, four. I meant four times. My bad. Two, three, four, five. There we go. Max length of all of them will be 50. Now we can do, go into execute and there's this cool new, well, there's this cool way of getting a bunch of information from your interaction. So we can do options. We can do user and let's say guild. And what this is going to do is it's going to break off the options. So instead of saying interaction to options, instead of saying interaction dot user, all those stuff, all those things, you can just do it like this. And they're all individual variables in their own way. Now it's really straightforward. We're going to, Ooh, we can also get the channel from it and then send it in the specific channel that this message is sent. So let's do channel. And since we have a lot of stuff going on, if you have a slower internet connection, it might be wise to do 
interaction.defer reply. Let's do that up here. Await interaction.defer reply. And in my case, I do want it to be ephemeral. Because I don't want everyone to know the response to the poll. We'll do a separate channel.send method afterwards. Anyways, now we can do const options. Hmm. Well, do you know what? I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to say const options equals interaction. All right, <clears throat> now if we do slash poll, I mean, we can make one and two required because we need to have a minimum of two if we wanted. Hmm. And let's make dot set required true. Okay, so it seems if we do It seems that if we do that, it should work. Okay, perfect. That's all we needed. Because now we can do const, well, we can do each dot name, right? Or dot value. We can add them in order. Okay. All right. So one way of doing this would be equals new embed builder and then we set title new poll well we'd have to be able to set the title of the poll so let's make a new option it's going to be poll title it's going to be required max length is going to be 50 why not title for the poll well do you know what yeah, 50 can do. And so now we can set this to be options index zero. And then we're going to set the description. No, we don't need to set the description, but we can set the color. And let's just set it to green. All right. Now the cool thing is, we can go in here, we can do embed.addFields, and let's make a new field. We'll set the name of the field to be, um, well we gotta set an emoji. So since the ID of these are gonna be specific, we could do, uh, well, let's see, hmm. So this is a fancy way of going through all the options. Essentially what we're doing is we're starting the index at one because in an array, it starts at zero. Computers always count starting at zero. And so nine is basically the 10th one, if that makes sense. I hope that does. Otherwise you can watch other videos that'll go into more depth of this until you understand it. But basically what we're saying is i is equal to one. If i is less than or equal to options.length, which is how many options there are. Actually, we can just say less than 
I increases. Because let's say there's only one option. Well, I starts at one. It is not less than options.length. And so it doesn't do anything else. Well, this is basically like an if statement here. This is setting everything up. This is the if statement. This is what it does after the after the if is done or the this session is done. Anyway, let's make a new array of emojis. Emojis equals an array. And what we're going to do is make a bunch of emojis. This is exactly how it would look from within the bot. One, two, three, four, five. This will be two. This will be three. This will be four. And this will be five. And essentially what I'm doing is if you were to take this and you're put it in Discord, it would look like that. And that's why I, I, I've memorized obviously the number names because they're very simple to memorize. And we're just making an array of emojis and it's gonna put that in front of it. And we'll even put a little space. Well, we can put that space in afterwards. And I guess we'll put it as the name field. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it like this and it's going to be And then it's going to be option. And then that will tell you what's what. And I guess if you want to specify it really badly, you could say inline's false, but I'm pretty sure it's by default false, so it shouldn't matter. Anyway, we're just adding a field here. Now if we go ahead and since we have the right channel, we can say channel dot send and we can say embeds embed that should work we can do a wait wait embed dot add fields that shouldn't matter actually because it has to get through the whole for loop all right and we can say wait interaction dot edit reply Sent pull sent pull successfully. And we don't need to set it as ephemeral again, because when you set it as ephemeral, as I went over in the previous episode up here in defer reply, that should set it for here as well in the interaction.edit reply. Now if we go ahead and restart this. Actually, let's completely redo it or wipe the command. Let's do slash poll, pull title, test poll. Option one is, well, let's say true and false. True, false. What is the error going to be? It doesn't have a value. I was curious if it was gonna give me an error for that, so we'll just set it to be like that. Let's see if that fixes it. Nope. Okay, does it have to have a space in there? There we go. Progress. Oh, right, we need to do option dot, what was it, was it value? Dot value. And dot value for title as well. Where's title? Title dot value. That should fix it all. Hey, would you look at that? True or false? Now all we gotta do is do the lovely um, reactions. So if we go in here, we don't need to add embed fields. We don't need to keep track of the option. But what we can do is we can add a reaction. So <clears throat> what we can do is const message equals interaction dot fetch reply. And I guess we don't need either of these. Now we can do message dot add reaction. Sorry, react. 
and we'll set emoji. That didn't work. Hmm. Well, what we can do is we can change this. And if you have a Windows computer, do Windows and dot, and then we type in one, and then Windows dot two, Windows dot three, Windows dot four, and Windows dot five. What's the reason that's... Why is it complaining? It should work, right? Okay, so part of it worked. Message.react is not a function. I guess I'm not actually properly fetching the message. Well, one way I can do this is... No need for the fancy fetch afterwards. Oh, I'm stupid. <coughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, so what happens if we try and do five options? Nice. All right, it works. But I mean, it, it's fun, actually. You can vote however you want. And it's all good. If you want to vote on multiple things, that's also fine. Who knows? Maybe you want to vote on multiple things. Eh, maybe you don't want them to. Oh, whatever. It's up to you guys to figure that out. I'm just here to get you, get you all on a basic start. All right, that's the poll command on, I guess. And that's it. By following these steps, you should now have a fully functional poll command for your Discord server. This is just one example of what you can do with Discord.js and JavaScript. So feel free to experiment and customize the code to fit your needs. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave any suggestions you may have for future videos in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now. Website with code for all the videos is now in the description. So it's great. You can go on there. You can look at the code snippet slash video section. And what that has is it has old videos and it has code snippets underneath. So it helps you compare your code. It doesn't have the code word for word as you go further into the series, but it definitely does have a good starting point and you can compare the core concepts to make sure you have exactly the right wording as sometimes case sensitive stuff is a real pig big pain in the butt for starting out. I have this as an option. So make sure to check that out, like, and subscribe for more and see you on the next episode. Bye for now.